Along Wisconsin's northern coast, rivers draining the land flow into the cold, blue waters of the freshwater sea, Lake Superior. Their waters mix and mingle in shallow coastal wetlands called freshwater estuaries. Just as Lake Superior shapes them, the estuaries in turn influence the lake through the quality of the water they send her in a dynamic relationship that affects the people, wildlife, and plants of the region. Like a string of pearls, freshwater estuaries grace Lake Superior's sweeping shoreline. Each estuary is a unique treasure, a pearl, connected by the waters of Lake Superior. And each tells a story best shared by the people who cherish them. Suspended from Lake Superior's southern shore lie an archipelago of 22 islands. They have been a traditional home of the Anishinaabe, or Ojibwe people, a center for the fur trade industry, a magnet for commercial fishing, beacons for ships traveling the lake, and a resource for logging and quarrying. Now, 21 of these islands are protected as the Apostle Islands National Lakeshore. An unexpected feature on Madeline, Outer, and Stockton Islands are freshwater estuaries. 5,000 years ago, a large sandbar connected Stockton to a smaller island. When Lake Superior's water level dropped about 2,500 years ago, the sandbar was exposed, forming a sand bridge, or tombolo. The tombolo borders the Stockton Island estuary, creating uncommon habitats where many rare plants and animals converge. We're within several steps of about six, seven different types of plant communities. The open water there is an interdunal pond, part of the lagoon, that's part of the estuary. The water draining off of Stockton Island and getting ponded up in between the old beach ridges. That's surrounded by a bog with pitcher plants and cranberries and sundews and several different types of orchids. And it's an area that's dominated by a couple different types of pine trees, red and white pine, but it's so sandy and so dry that the pine trees cannot grow close together. They're very widely spaced apart in a savanna type of a situation. And there's lots of blueberries and huckleberries and a number of different types of heath plants that are adapted to that dry environment. A variety of forest types, including pine, boreal, and hemlock hardwood, form the backdrop for the Stockton Island Estuary. So even though we look around us today and see some pretty mature forests, it doesn't mean that the islands had never been logged. But in most cases, it's been 30, 50, 80, and maybe even 100 years since the intense logging activity has passed. So the estuary areas have had a chance to recover, as has most of the rest of the islands. It's turned into a, a very pristine type of a situation for, the, uh, for these wetlands. Stockton Island and its unique estuary are accessible by watercraft and offer many opportunities for recreation, education, exploration, and research. Even though this tombolo has been here for about 2,500 years, the lake level in this area is slowly rising as a result of uh, the rebound from the glaciers. And uh, the north shore of Lake Superior is rebounding faster than the south shore, so the south shore of the lake is basically being slowly inundated by water. And that's what creates a lot of these estuaries, these, these bogs, these lagoons and ponds. And because of that relative rise in the lake level, it's slowly whittling away the size of the tombolo. And so we're measuring the speed at which that happens. It's not going to disappear anytime soon. But given another 2,500 years, we may have a lot smaller 
campground.